Oh. I hope it didn't. Oh my gosh. Please be seated. Good afternoon. I think we lucked out on the weather. <laughs> it's been said that if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. Pretty sure we've heard him today. Matter of fact, his whole family has heard plenty of God laughing. That's not a bad thing. God has a real tendency of when he giggles at you, he's going to make up for it later down the road. And we're just blessed beyond any words that I can say. And we're not alone in this. I'm going to do a little preaching today, despite what you want. <laughs> in the Bible, in Matthew, in chapter 8, there's a story of Jesus healing a blind man. And you think, eh, he did that quite a bit. This one was kind of special if you read the story. Because what he did was the blind man came to him and wanted to heal. Jesus spits in his eyes, lays his hands on him, takes his hands off and says, what can you see? The man says, I see people, but they look like trees. At this point, Jesus has got to be thinking, no, wait, this is supposed to work. So he does it again. Spits on the guy's eyes, puts his hands over him, says, can you see? And the guy says, I'm healed. Even Jesus had to take two swipes at him. God was gave him. You're not alone. Remember that as you go forward. That your glass is going to be one. It's never going to be half full. It's never going to be half empty. It's always going to be full. Blessings that you can see. Blessings that you can. That being said, we're gathered here today to take part in the most time-honored celebration of the human family. The uniting of a man and a woman in marriage. Patrick and Tamara, they've come to witness before us and before God telling of their love for each other. And we remember that theirs, their love is sourced by those that love them into being. Cameron, we got one last thing. You can come here today and change your name. I'm going to walk out here. <laughs> we come here today to remind Patrick and Cameron that they are performing an act of complete faith each and the other. And the marriage that they create, the heart of their marriage will be the relationship which they alone create. And in a world where faith often falls short of expectation, it is a true tribute to these two who now join hands and hearts in perfect faith. Patrick, Patrick you receive Tamara as your wife. We you pledge to her your love, faith, and tenderness, cherishing her with a husband's loyalty and devotion. Yeah. Now receive Patrick as your husband. You pledge to him your love, faith, and tenderness, cherishing him with a wife's love. Patrick and Tamara, receive each other from your families now, and give you into each other's keeping by saying now each to the other words which will tell of your love. I you. Hi, Patrick. Take you, Tamara, to be no other than yourself. <laughs> in all the ways that life may find us, tending to you in sickness, and rejoicing with you in health, as long as we both shall live. I, Tamara, take you, Patrick, to be no other than yourself. In all the ways that life will find us, tending to you in sickness, Rejoicing with you in heaven. As long as we boast of each other. We are now given to see her.
Just got to buy a gumball machine and stuff. Stop in Walmart in here, too. These circles of precious metal are justly regarded as a fitting emblem of the purity and permanence of the marriage state. The ancients were reminded by the circle of eternity, as it is fashioned to have neither beginning nor end. While gold is so incorruptible that it cannot be tarnished by use nor time, so may this union be as incorruptible in its purity and more lasting than time itself. <laughs> Slide that up. <laughs> Wear this ring for every time. It's a symbol of love and of peace. And of all that is on the Wear this ring for every pastor. As a symbol of love, and of peace, and of all that is unending. We speak to Patrick and Tamara of love, in which the trust and freedom of the other person is as, is as significant as the trust and freedom of oneself. We speak to them of generosity, which gathers the beauty of the earth for riches. We speak of kindness, which turns away the wrath of foolish men and women. We speak of each of our hopes for their continued growth through patience, one for the other. We speak of the need to find laughter every day with which to banish the trials of that day. We speak of our confidence that new levels of understanding discovered by them during trials shall ever bring ever new surprises of strength and fortitude that they do not yet know. In the years which will bring them into a greater age and wisdom, we pray their love shall be ever young that they will always be able to recover from the hard times. In this hope, may they keep the vows made on this day in freedom, teaching each other who they are and what they yet shall be, enabling them to know that in the fullness of being, they are more than themselves and they are more than each other, that they are all of us, and together we share the fruits of life. Patrick and Tim, inasmuch as you have declared your love and devotion before God, family, and friends, I now pronounce you man and wife. Now you will feel no rain, for each of you is sanctuary to the others. Now you will feel no cold, for each of you is warmth to the other. Now there is no isolation. Now there is no loneliness. You are as one, with one life in front of you. Thank you. I think we've had quite enough. It is my distinct honor and privilege to be the first to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Sims. Get out of here.